What up, though? This Petty Pock, Vinci Il, V-I-N-N-C-I-E-L, Islam to all the Moabites around the globe. And I greet you in my native tongue. What we say here in Detroit, what up, though? Don't forget to smash, like, and subscribe. This is my new old page. I got access back to it, but I don't have access to the old videos, so I'm redoing them and putting them on here. For you all to view, thank you for the traction that you gave me on my last page. But this one just had way more subscribers. And it was better to, you know, not start way over again. But uh, today, I'm going to give you the 24 Michigan rules in depth, detail, but yet abstract, fast. Right? So let's get to the number one rule. When I went to quarantine, a guy told me there's three things you want to stay away from. And that's the three Gs. And that's gays, gangs. And gambling. Now let's get into that. Now, gays, if you are not a homosexual man, prison rules state that you should not be. If you're not a homosexual man, prison rules state that you should not be hanging with another homosexual. Um, first, you get the stereotypes, you get treated different. And then also, if you are hanging with uh, a feminine homosexual and another guy likes him, he will get you out the way to get to his prized possession. That means putting a knife under your bed and dropping a kite to the police and telling them to search your room. And now you in a hole with a knife case or a guy might do something to you. And especially if they dating, you hanging out with him and he feel like you're getting too comfortable. He might get you out the way. So that's always dangerous. And for the feminine homosexuals to go into prison when you got on the tight pants and you're wearing the Kool-Aid on your lips or whatever the case may be, you got to realize some of those guys are in there for some sexual deviant type of stuff, right? And they might be a little bit attracted to you and try to take what's not theirs. So if you're not into that type of stuff, you want to be real, real, real careful. You don't want to be dating more than one person at the same time because that could get you stabbed and them stabbed. You got to realize you are the closest thing to a woman they will ever see in their life again. And some of them accepted that fact. Some people don't want to go home and can't go home and been ruining their chances to go home to stay with another guy in prison. So realize what type of environment you in and be safe. Gambling. Ain't nothing wrong with gambling. A lot of organizations allow you to gamble. A lot of gangs allow you to gamble, but they don't want you gambling on ass, blowing up no tables. Blowing up tables means not paying what you owe. Gambling on ass is gambling with nothing. Some people might run a poker table. Let's say I run a poker table. I put four people at the table. So let's just say three of those people all lose in the debt and they're hundred dollars in debt. That's three hundred dollars. And we all plan from Monday to store day, and store day could be 10 days away, and store day is the day that you pay. But if you don't know no money coming in, if your wife don't left you, you don't got an argument with her, and she don't send you nothing, and you out of luck on that on that store day to pay up, that could be your ass, Mr. Postman. So therefore, you always want to have guaranteed money. If you miss the store by mistake or something happened with your store slip or your kiosk, you should have access to money as far as calling somebody and saying, hey, send this to his account so he can break bread. Now, like I said, if I run a poker table, I put four people at that table. Three people three people lose. They're $100 in debt. That's $300. So when everybody pay up, I get a cut of that. I get 50 I get 60 I get $100 or whatever was agreed to. But I'm not getting that for free. My job and my position is to make sure everybody pays to put good poker players at the table, good playing people at the table. So if you don't pay up, I owe that debt. And then I can't make my money like I want to no more without worrying about somebody running off on me because I let you slide with it. Now I have to pay them and make an example of you. So it's a lose-lose situation for all of us. If you don't have no money, don't gamble. If you don't have a guaranteed income or somebody that you can call and say, send that money here, some bad can happen to you. So always pay your debts. Always have the money to pay your debts. Don't make false promises. Gangs, I don't care if you're going home in two days or seeing the parole board in two days. If your homeboy getting jumped on the stab, you are to aid and assist him. That means jump in it too and you are both going to the hole and you ruin your chance at the parole board, right? That's why you don't get into gangs. Organizations, some organizations are cool. Religious organizations, they're more understanding and they will tell you to go home and stay out of stuff and generally will protect you from getting into things because they want you on the outside world because they feel like you can do more for them. I said they tend to care more. Some depend on the leadership, the structure, and who's there. That could be your behind too. So you really want to stay away from anything if you can. But if you're religious and you just want to study with people 
and you know you might be a Sunni, but you might not be on rotation and count. That means following the rules of the Sunni in that particular location. That means you're not. If you don't rotate, you don't mob, you don't move. You're not a body with the Sunnis, but you are a Sunni. That means you're not entitled to protection. You're not entitled to um, the treasure, the money accumulated. You're not entitled to getting a knife. You're not entitled to eating with those guys when they uh do special cook-ups outside of the kitchen in the unit with stuff off the commissary store. So you're not entitled to none of that, right? But, like I said, when you sign up for something, you got to know the consequences to come with it, and that's what they feel like. You sign up the gangbang, you know the consequences to come with it. You know that you can get a parole flop. You know that you can go to the hole. You know that you can lose some good time if you was on good time when you got locked up, but there's none now. Uh, you got to do 100% of your time in Michigan Department of Corrections. There's no day for day, hour for hour, none of that stuff no more. You're doing 100% of your time as of now. So when you sign up for a gang, you know the consequences to come with it. Now, brawling and trading. When you brawl something from somebody, you have to pay it back. When you trade with somebody, if you say, I'll give you my lunch Monday for your cookie on Tuesday, you better have that cookie or he's going to feel like you hold him and disrespect him and took food out of his, out of his mouth. That's a big no-no with a bunch of hungry men filled with testosterone. That's a big no-no to try to punk them or seem like you're punking them or not keeping your deal, feeling like they're weak. That could get you in a whole, whole, whole lot of trouble. Now, when you brawl stuff, especially from the store, man, you better pay it back. When you brawl from the store, man, you owe one and a half. For example, if I borrow a bag of chips from you for $1.50, I owe you that bag of chips and half of what the chips cost. So I owe you a $1.50 bag of chips back. Not hygiene, not a deal. If I borrow food, I pay you back in food. If I borrow hygiene, I pay you back in hygiene or food if we agree to it. But if I borrow food from you, nobody wants to get hygiene back. So I borrow that bag of chips for you for $1.50. I owe you a bag of chips or equivalent in food, and I owe you 75 cents in food. So once that money accumulate, a guy turned 15 to $100, he'll go to a guy who owes a lot of restitution and can't get money, and he'll have his people send him a money order and say, look, I got $100 worth of food for you for 150 right? I got $200 worth of food for you for $300, and that's how he makes his money and pays for his legal fees or his prison stay or whatever. It's a hustle. He's not loaning you that stuff and waiting those days to get his stuff back for free. Nothing in prison is free, and generally if it is, it's some type of strings attached to it. So you want to always pay back what you owe and have the means to pay it back because he's going to want his money and he don't want the reputation of people who can come borrow stuff from him and not pay it back, you know? And also, too, you got to be careful with that because the guy might have you send the money to him. And when it hit his account, that's when he's supposed to give it to you, right? Or as people confirm that they got it, but he'll lie and say they never got it. And now you out of $150. What you going to do? You going to let him take it from you? I don't think so. If you, you know, really gelling like that. But some people are um, mature enough to let it go. Me, I couldn't. I came down with one year. Nine months left on a year, one, uh, one, one to four years, and I ended up doing the whole four years because I couldn't let certain things slide. I took the prison rules very, 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 very serious. A lot of stuff that I got into, I put myself in that position, but nevertheless, it was a great lesson to learn. Um, buttoning people conversations. If you overhear somebody misinforming somebody with some information, you don't button in conversation like, hey, dude, you wrong. Uh, I know this, this, and that. You say, excuse me, I hear what y'all talking about. Can I join your conversation? And he'll permit you or deny you. But you don't want to just jump in it because he might be like, nigga, who talking to you? That's what he might do. So I always ask to get in somebody's conversations. Be conscious of the words that you use. Know that the higher conscious people, the religious people, the older men, the people in the Nation of Islam, the Moors, they don't want to be called the nigger word. Nigger is a disgraceful word to them. They call each other, they don't even call each other black men or Negroes like that. They call each other Asiatics, black gold, uh, whatnot. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Moors don't like to be, well, Moors don't like to be called black, right? So you got to know the lingo and the things that offend people. You got to know the words that offend the gang members. Bloods don't like being called slobs. Crabs don't like, excuse me, Crips don't like being called crabs. Vice Lords don't like you to refer to the police as 12 because 12 is one of their number. They don't like the word hook. GDs don't like the word brick and glaze, donuts, and, and the word spoon. So therefore, when you talking and you, you know, you, 
was like, oh man, I, I I was so drunk last night. I went to sleep, man, best sleep I ever had. I was slobbing. A blood might get mad at you and check you. Some people are mature enough to know that you don't mean nothing by and your intentions is not to offend nobody, so they'll let it go. But you never know. So you gotta learn the words. Don't call nobody fag, dick sucker, bitch. People hate that word, and those are fighting words. Fag, dick sucker, bitch, snitch, rat. Don't do none of that. Even if they are. People don't like those words, and people have a hard time accepting what they are. You don't want to call nobody homosexual, even if they are homosexual, because some people don't identify as homosexual, even though they're sleeping with another man. I don't make the rules, okay? Don't don't look at me like, oh, this guy correct. I don't make the rules. It's, it's the rules, okay? I didn't make it. Now, when you're on the yard and you're walking, you never let anybody walk in between you. That's a safety and security issue. I was walking the yard one day with the homie Frank Sanders Eel, and um, we walking, and the guy tried to get in between us, so I moved, I'm like just being polite. The track kind of small. It's a track with grass in the middle and tables on the outside of it. So we walk in circles with traffic or against it. Against it is better because if everybody walking this way, you get to see everybody's face as you walk in the opposite way. But it don't matter which way you walk, and you don't split nobody. So I let him split it or tried to. He pulled me close, said, you don't never let nobody split you. Hey, bro, go around. And it was very, very serious, right? It's a safety and security issue. When you're running and you're doing fast moving around, somebody on the track that's walking, when you're running past them, you say on your left or on your right so they can be aware that you are not on nothing. You are alerting them. That don't mean nothing won't happen, but it's a respect sign. And <clears throat> also, it gives you some type of precaution, right? You actually can get to look and see who it is. Is it somebody you're beefing with, somebody you had a problem with, words with? Because they could stab you. So fast movements around people, you need to let them know if you're on your left or you're on your right. When they call five minutes to yard or three minutes to yard, all the gangs and organizations, the religions will gather. They'll gather in their groups and they'll walk in, right? No particular order. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. No particular order. They walk in. When you're walking in on that pathway, that small pathway, you have to say left or right. But you never want to walk on the right because that could really get you socked, shot. When, they, when I say shot, means stab, could get you jumped or make somebody very mad at you for walking on the right because it should be controlled traffic. Because everybody want to know who doing what and they want to be precautious. Nobody want to be a victim. So walking on your right on the way to the yard is much more serious than walking past somebody on the right when you're on the track. Way, 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 way more serious. It's a different level to it. All right, you don't shake nobody's hands with gloves on. I don't care how cold it is. I ask prisoners that been down 30 years why you don't shake nobody's hands with gloves on. And uh, they couldn't tell me. I didn't make the rules. It's just the prison rules, and that's what they told me, man. So that's what I'm giving you. I don't know why, but I don't care how cold it is. You take your glove off when you shake somebody's hand. I made that mistake a couple times. Nobody was super super mad but they did get kind of irritated when i did it the second time by mistake to the same person uh on a different day and um i apologize for it you don't cut in line you know you and the child hog on the child people hungry people want to get in and out of there people want to hurry up and steal some chicken and go back home. don't cut in front of nobody wait in line like everybody else some people are usually the gang bangers and let people do it and some people might not say nothing and just let it go because everybody trying to keep peace um but some could pop off because of you cutting in line, right? And in some states, that's just completely disrespectful and you're going to get in a fight. But in MDLC, people, you tend to get mad. But I've seen situations happen from it also. But more than not, people would just let it go. Um, even though it seemed like a lot of savagery and barbaric rules in prison, it's, it's a lot of peace and order. It teach you a lot of structure that you can bring back out here into the free world. And... Um, Implemented in your everyday life, whether in your household, your job, or on the streets. It's, it's definitely structured, crazy rules, but it's definitely structured in a lot of respect. Um, mind your own business. If you're blood, don't be in the Crips business, in the internal affairs or outer affairs. It has nothing to do with you. Don't get your gang in something because you in somebody else's business, unless y'all got an alliance. And even still then, you don't get in their business. You let their household handle their household 
And if it's a big problem and they think they need the aid and assistance of the gang they ally with, they'll let you know or the leaders will talk and it'll trickle down to you. So don't go putting yourself in other people's business. If your homeboy get into an altercation and you give him a knife and he go stab somebody in another group, that's your ass, Mr. Postman. Your gang going to get you for putting them in danger or the guys that uh, or whoever it was that got stabbed gang going to get you. You stay in your own lane, or if you do give him a knife, make sure ain't nobody around to see it because somebody go back and be like, hey, you know what? He went down to such and such room and got a knife before he came and did it. Oh, for real? And they come get at you, you know what I'm saying? So mind your own business. That'll keep you out of a whole, whole lot of trouble. Don't be too friendly with the police because if people getting raided, getting caught for tattoos, getting caught for drink here, here, and there, uh, or, or consistently, and you always in a police face smile, especially the younger guys. The older guys can get away with it because they've been jailing a long time. And they very, very institutionalized. And that's how they used to jail back in the day, having crazy conversations with the COs because it was less strict. But if you're a young guy, you stay away from the police because three or four gangs might get together and go into their box, their treasurer, the, how do you make money and save up. They might go in it and say, here go 100. The Crips might come and say, here go 50. GDs might say, here's 100. The Bloods might say, here's 100. Go stab him. And I don't see people stabbed for a little over $100. Uh, 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 the, the least amount I ever seen somebody stabbed was for $100. And it wasn't cash. It was in food and hygiene and things like that. Because you're going to go to the hole for a long time. But some people be so bored and want to take hits, they just do it. I don't know why you go stab somebody and ruin your wreck like that. And your freedom with inside the jail for 100 bucks. Now, just imagine if somebody paid a 1000 What can happen to you? That's lawyer fees right there. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, motion fees and filing stuff, filing fees. So that's how how that go. Um, false accusations. It, don't call nobody a rat or snitch, especially if they're not in your gang. It really don't even matter, you feel me? Because even if they're a rat and snitch, their gang still might fear them and respect them so much they might not do nothing. And you ruining this guy's reputation and what he fought for all these years and stuff like that, he might come see you. And likely he will. You call him a rat, you don't call them like a rat, uh, a homosexual, a snitch, excuse me, a rat, snitch, or a thief without proper proof. If you call somebody a snitch, you better have paperwork or access to it or the links that your people can go on the world and verify that he is an actual snitch. And it better be him. It better not be nobody with the same first and last name, but a different middle name. It better not be nobody with the same middle, last, and first name, but a different date on the, on, 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 on a birthday. There's no coming back from that. You call somebody a rat snitch. Something usually going to happen to you, especially if you do it to somebody that's really, really about that life. For real, for real. Now, watch where you sit in the child hall. Know which phone your 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 gang or organization use. Some some uh, organizations, they'll take, the they'll put the vice lords under the five and... The Bloods, just under the five, and the Moorish Americans, which are under the five, all on the same phone. They might put the GDs, the Maniacs, and the Cobras all on the same phone. They might put the white guys and the homosexuals on the same phone. You might have a religious phone, and then you might have a Vice Lord Blood phone, and different days it rotate who can go first on these phones because, look, it's, it's 150 guys in the unit, 200 guys in the unit, 300 guys, you know, wherever. And y'all got to use the phone so to keep order and peace and security you go to that phone um that, that you assigned to unless you ask somebody can you use their phone if all their members are uh off the phone and used it or whatever the case may be so you better ask first and uh room etiquette if it's cold outside don't open the window unless you ask your bunkie because he'll think you're trying to freeze them out freeze them out is making it so cold and uncomfortable in the room you want them out and he get to thinking that he might do something to you i'm gonna tell y'all a crazy story about that next dude crazy little story about that um also don't wake up in the middle of the night rattling the bag eating chips and candy waking your bunkie up don't wake up praying in the middle of the night or whatever when it's time to sleep you lay on that bunk and go to sleep you go to the bathroom, you lay to sleep, that's it. That's the only thing really acceptable when the TV's out, the light's out. Don't be in there talking, headphones loud, banging music, shaking your head, rocking the bed. Don't, you better not masturbate while you're bunking in the room and he's not a homosexual. You better not be doing that because that's the ultimate disrespect. You better not have sex in that room with no other man 
unless you got permission from your bunkie or he old school and he just understand it and don't care. The young guys, you better not do it the wrong room, smelling like feces or whatever the case may be. That might be your behind. Also, don't touch on your bunky stuff. Don't sit on his bed. Don't step on it. I don't know why you want to sit on somebody else's bed anyway, but don't step on it. Don't touch it. Don't touch none of his stuff. Don't use his clippers while he's gone. Anything can happen if he find out that you're doing it. You, you know, if you went in his locker and took one piece of candy, he might think that a bag of chips are too missing and stab you while you sleep, right? When you pass gas, say excuse me ASAP. And if you can, let them know before you do it. But if it slip out, say, hey, my bad, I'm sorry, man. Open the window up. Say, I'm about to open the window up. Spray the baby powders. Open the door up. Shut it. Get the wind flowing in there. But don't just be passing gas around another man because he might think you're trying to do some homosexual stuff, telling him that you're open, or he just might find it disrespectful. And um, a lot of guys are off their rockers, so that's something that you don't want to do. Be respectful in that room. By all means, don't always be on sanctions and loss of privileges. Loss of privileges and sanctions mean you just didn't go to the hall. It was a minor infraction, but you can't go to the day room. You got to sit in that room all day for six, seven days straight. And that's fine every now and then, 30 days here, 30 days there if you get in a fight and come from the hall. But if you consistently get minor infractions, getting seven days on top of seven days, and you always in a room, that's going to be a problem because a guy wants some private time sometimes. When you go to the yard, he'll stay in the room. When he go to the yard, you, you stay in the room. That's how I go, right? So he wants some private time. He wants time to masturbate and put a sheet up over the door, masturbate. He wants some time to think to himself, watch his TV by himself. Um, when you always constantly in the room, that's a problem. Okay, now when you go to the bathrooms, if there's three stalls, one here, one here, and one here, don't go to the middle one because that means you're blocking two stalls now. You want to keep a stall open in between. Now, if y'all on limited time before you lock down, ain't got to go down for count, you can ask, hey, can I get that middle stall real quick? And they say, yes, come do it. But if you're not on bar time, you sit there and wait. But if you're using that toilet, don't be sitting out reading on newspaper, taking your time. You get in and you get out because somebody will say something to you about doing that. Don't do it. It's, that, it's just that simple. When you go to the showers, you leave a stall in between unless you can't do it. Level five, you can't do it. You got to go to whatever shower available, right? And be all next to each other, right? And you can't take, in level five, you can't take your shoes to the shower because it allows you to have more grip to fight back, to fight the police, to fight if somebody assault somebody, kick them hard so you can't have shoes on, you're going to have flip-flops. But in the lower levels, you have flip-flops on when you go to the shower, but you don't do it. You take your shoes to the shower. You have, well, excuse me, you have shoes on, so you take your shoes to the shower just in case. So when you wash up, throw on your flip-flops, wash up, hurry up, put your shoes back on because somebody could come in there slanging that on and you got to wrestle it from them and it's going to be real hard to do in the flip-flops and barefooted on a slippery, wet floor. Right, don't look at nobody else's stall either. That's a no-no. Don't look at nobody else's stall because nobody want to feel like you objectifying them and they're heterosexual and you're another male, okay? Don't do it. Do not do it. When you're walking in the hallways and there's room doors with a little glass in it that you can look out or if it's an open cell with bars that you can see all the way through, when you walking, you look straight ahead. Don't look in nobody else's room. Because especially if it's the two-man type of room, somebody could be having homosexual activity and they don't want nobody to know. And then you see it and it's a problem. They could think you're trying to steal something from them, seeing what they got in their room. So you don't do it. You keep your head straight because that could cause a problem. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. If you got a knife, don't ever... I told y'all that. Then I, don't give it to your homeboy. Like I said... If they find out, they got you. But I, I, I said that, so I ain't going to get into that. Um, don't cut the line. Said that. Selling slum is also uh, another word for just joking on each other, talking about each other. Oh, you oh, you got beat up. Ha, ha, ha. It's fun and games until somebody get mad and serious. So you stay away from that selling slum and just keep regular conversations going. Don't talk to people who want to sell you slum because you get sucked into it. That turned into a situation. You can get mad or they can get mad. So I don't sell slum out the bars um, because I don't get mad before and just playing around and somebody said something that wasn't true and people laughed at it and I was mad. And we end up getting into a fight over it because he said 
it, it's no rules to really slum selling. So a guy might slip you and slipping somebody is a gay joke. And people get real offended over gay jokes. And that's another rule. Don't do the gay jokes with nobody. People don't like that, especially the old school guys. You might get a little piece of that pie you ain't you weren't looking for, okay? So stay away from that. And don't do anything without permission if you belong to an organization because if you get into a if you go sock somebody in a child hall and then tell nobody, when your gang come out, they could possibly get assaulted and don't even know what happened. So that you let everybody know things ahead of time so everybody can be prepared or try to make peace of the situation. You don't do nothing on your own. You don't act on your own. You got to report all incidents. Peace and blessings and love to y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed this, man. I have more on the way. Peace.